Simon and the Forum of Forgiveness. Can I just say before we continue that this there is reprehensible behaviour in this particular story, okay. which is not condoned. I'm just saying. This sounds good. No, no, no. I'm just. Yeah. It's not particular. It's not outrageously wow. reprehensible. How but this gets past the lawyers. I went to school at an inner city comprehensive in the northwest of England, where the only form of extracurricular activity came in the way of weekend camping trips for senior pupils, organised by our head teacher, Mr. Barker. The format for these weekends was always the same: fourteen seniors and the head would pile into the school minibus and set off for the site with accompanying staff following along in their own cars. This always included the woodwork teacher, who towed a dinghy behind his car so he could spend the weekend sailing it. Good for him. Classic woodwork behaviour, yeah. huh? Now, our school being an inner-city comprehensive, a lot of the pupils didn't fancy the idea of camping, so it turned out that the same old faces kept turning up. A favourite venue of Mr Barker's was a field in Snowdonia with a stream running down one side where we could wash and also canoe and a lake at the end uh, where we could sail in the woodwork teacher's beloved dinghy. Now, it has to be said that there was some serious tent inequality in this particular camp. The rest of the party had two-man ridge tents, but Mr Barker's abode for the weekend was a huge frame tent known to us regulars as Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Here, Mr. Barker spent the weekend with his entire family, who followed on by car and consisted of his wife, son, daughter, and his psychotic dog, Fido. <laughs> after, after the journey... I think these trips sound quite fun. <laughs> Apart from the washing in the river bit. Yeah. After the journey, tent pitch and meal on Friday, an early night was called for, but on the previous Saturday nights during these weekends, it was something different. We would be fed our evening meal. Then, if the weather was good, the staff would build a bonfire for the children and retire to the large meal tent whilst we sat unsupervised round the roaring blaze. Someone would check, us, uh, check on us at various intervals, but this became less frequent as the night wore on and we would eventually be told to go to bed. Next morning, the contents of the camp rubbish bin would give mute testament to our lack of supervision, lots of tins and bottles with labels which included the words percent proof on them. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. After a fairly humdrum day of activities on this particular Saturday, uh, the evening came round and, bang to form, the staff retired to their meal tent. Mr Barker and his family were in Buckingham Palace, lording it up as usual, and we were happily sitting unsupervised round the blazing fire. Out came our special lemonades and a good night was in the offing. Now, to make obviously, there's lots of reprehensible mm, behaviour Obviously. Yes. Obvi we don't condone no. that. No. Now, to make sure that we weren't discovered, we'd arranged a simple system. If the flap of the teacher's meal tent or Buckingham Palace so much as twitched, our spotter would simply burst into song, <laughs> giving us time to hide the contraband. Our infrequent checks were accompanied by such campfire favourites as Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Kumbaya, my lord, and rather appropriately, ten green bottles. Oh, very good. This system worked very well on the night in question until later in the evening when a flap twitch resulted in a rousing chorus of Old MacDonald Had a Farm and a shadowy figure approached the bonfire. People rushed to hide the illicit beverages and then, as the figure got closer, we realised that it was, in actual fact, Mr Barker's daughter. Oh, I. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Who's the same age as us? She wants to sing as well. <laughs> what are you up to? She asked. Uh, we're just sitting and having a sing, said one of our number, trying desperately to hide the can of pale ale that he'd been quaffing. That's beer, she exclaimed, because she's pretty smart. We hold our breaths. Was she about to reveal our ghastly secret to her dad? We waited. We waited a few more seconds, and then she said, Can I have one? So, phew, a tin was hesitantly passed over. Thanks, she said, sitting down on a log. Now, what are you really up to? It must be said that the rest of the evening passed very convivially. And when time was called, we all went to bed very relieved that our secret had been kept. Of course, next morning, the camp bin was overflowing with the results of our evening, something none of us had thought to address at the time. In the cold light of morning, I realised we had a problem. Surely there was no way Mr Barker would miss this pile of cans and bottles. Well, he didn't. Mr Barker didn't hesitate to reprimand the guilty party over the contents or who he believed to be the guilty party because it turns out that the teachers had also had something of a night of it in the meal tent and after our breakfast we could hear Mr Barker giving them a thorough talking to over their consumption of lemonade from the night before. Quite right. Well, it turns out that they were at a loss to explain the sheer volume 
that had been consumed. The only reason they could think of was the fact that we were sharing the field with another set of campers, a party of RAF cadets, <laughs> who must have used, obviously, they must have used our bin yeah. to dispose yeah. of their own evidence. Makes sense you to can't me. trust them RAFs. Yeah. So anyway, Father Sam, I need forgiveness from those members of staff who had such a hard time from the head over their perceived level of alcohol consumption, from the RAF cadets who were blamed, even without knowing it, for the problem, and from the head himself for leading his perfect daughter astray. I must say that now I work with young children, I'm regularly uh, checked and would not condone this behaviour at all, but as we say, different times, yes. now would seem an appropriate time to say different times. That is Andy's defence, really. And, uh, and obviously now that kind of thing wouldn't happen because... Uh, Teachers are far more astute and clever and smart on the case, right, and yes. they, mm. and also teachers don't drink anymore. That's also true. At all. At all, ever. Yeah. No. Particularly if they're on school trips, <laughs> yep. because they need to set an example. And as for the head, well, so um, Sister Bobby, what do you think? It's tricky. This is such an idyllic, lovely camping trip. I think you are very, very, very lucky children to have teachers that want to take you camping because you can imagine they might want to break from you. But no, they took you with them, which is really, really lovely. And also left you to your own devices, so you had some time on your own, which is great. Generally, I think there was no harm done generally. And it seems that you were actually quite well, what's the word, behaved with what you were drinking with a lemonade. It wasn't yes. kind of too much. You kind as of kept, we know. you know, that's... Uh, I think, really, I'm going to have to forgive because it seems that no harm's done at all. So it's a quite easy forgiver. All right, Brother Matthew? I, I have to say, if someone told me that I was going to have to wash myself in a stream for a week, I would need <laughs> quite a lot of very strong alcohol to get me through that. Um, but, so, not when you, but not when you were uh, at not school. Not obviously when I was at school, that said. I mean, uh, where were the showers? There was no showers at all? I'm going to have to go in the river? That makes no sense. They didn't have showers um, Obviously, days. back in those days, different times. Um, so I am, I am minded to forgive because, you know, there's only one way of getting through that, particularly with a psychotic dog running around as well. Yes, I, yes I'm, I'm definitely